Welcome friends to this last lecture of week 7 and we will cover fertilizers which are very very important uh, topic which is a very important topic and then in this lecture we will basically cover uh, only the inorganic fertilizers however uh, we will not have you know we will we will not cover the manures in this lecture which is basically the organic forms of fertilizers or organic fertilizers. So, uh, the concepts which we will cover in this lecture is basically what is fertilizers and then classification of fertilizer, different state fertilizer, liquid nitrogenous fertilizer and different customized fertilizer like you know and also different micronutrients fertilizers. So, what is fertilizer? Fertilizer is a material which contains one or more essential plant nutrients required for the plant growth and development. So, basically we apply fertilizer to maintain the soil fertility status. Soil fertility is the ability of the soil to supply the plant the required amount of nutrients, uh, required amount of nutrients and uh, and to maintain the soil fertility we have to apply the soil fertilizer uh, we have to apply the different chemical and organic fertilizers however in this lecture we will be discussing only the chemical fertilizers so the fertilizers may be solid liquid or gaseous substances of definite chemical composition and high analytical value and we'll see uh, what are the different class if you know what are the different classes of fertilizers so, if we classify the fertilizer, there will be there will be three major classes. One is straight fertilizer, second complex fertilizer, and finally mixed fertilizer. So, straight fertilizers are those which can supply only one primary nutrient, namely nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. Example: urea, ammonium sulfate, potassium chloride, and potassium sulfate. So, these are basically the straight fertilizer because they can supply only one primary element. You can see here in case of urea it can supply only nitrogen, in case of ammonium sulphate only supply nitrogen which is a primary nutrient and also in case of potassium chloride it supply potassium, in case of uh, potassium sulphate it is also only potassium. So, these are called the straight fertilizer. So, what is the complex fertilizer? Complex fertilizer contain two or three primary nutrients of which two primary nutrients are in a chemical combination and these fertilizers are usually produced in granular form example diammonium phosphate, nitrophosphate etcetera. So, the complex fertilizer you will see two or more primary nutrients it could be either nitrogen or phosphate or phosphate potassium or nitrogen phosphate potassium. So, it has to be a minimum of two macronutrient and also they are present in chemically combined form. Example is DAP or diammonium phosphate where you can see nitrogen and phosphate are fixed in uh, you know are chemically combined and finally mixed fertilizers. Now, mixed fertilizer are basically the physical mixtures of straight fertilizers and uh, they contain two or three primary nutrient elements and uh, mixed fertilizer are made by thoroughly mixing uh, the ingredients either mechanically or manually. So, also fertilizer can be classified based on its physical forms. So, basically there are two types of uh, you know physical based on the physical forms we can classify the fertilizer into solid fertilizer and liquid fertilizers. We will discuss liquid nitrogenous fertilizer later on however, let us discuss about the solid fertilizers. So, solid fertilizer can be found in powder form example single superphosphate which is the most common phosphatic fertilizer in India, most popular phosphatic fertilizer in India. Uh, you know also we call SSP, we will discuss that later on. Then crystals of phos you know example is ammonium sulphate, then prills of fertilizer uh, example urea, diammonium phosphate and superphosphate and then the granules which are Holland granules and then super granules, urea super granules and briquettes are like urea briquettes. So, these are some pictures of uh, the commonly used fertilizers in India. For example, you can see ammonium sulphate which contains only 20.6 percent of nitrogen, then single superphosphate which contains only 16 percent of 
P2O5 as phosphorus pentoxide and then DAP which contains 18 percent nitrogen and 46 percent of uh, phosphorus pentoxide whereas MOP the last one this is the MOP this one is uh, muriate of potash or MOP which is uh, cont which contains 60 percent of potassium oxide or K2O. Now remember guys whenever we are presenting the phosphate content and potassium content in fertilizer we generally express them in terms of either phosphorus pentoxide or P2O5 or K2O or potassium oxides. Now you can see these are some urea granules uh, and uh, this is the most common uh, nitrogenous fertilizer uh, in India and it, it is the it is the most rich fert uh, nitrogenous fertilizer contain 46 percent of nitrogen and uh, we will discuss that later on. So, let us start with the nitrogenous fertilizer first. So, the straight nitrogenous fertilizers are those which contains ni nitrogen either in the form of ammonium NH4 plus or nitrate or both ammonium and nitrate and amide form or cyanide form cyanamide, uh, or so cyanamide form. So, out of these the ammonium and nitrate forms are inorganic whereas amide and cyanamide forms are organic in nature. Some examples are given uh, below. First of all ammonium sulphate, uh, some ammoniacal forms uh, of uh, ammonical form containing nitrogenous fertilizer ammonium sulphate, then ammonium chloride, then anhydrous ammonia and in case of nitrate uh, sodium nitrate, then calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate and in case of uh, combined ammoniacal and nitrate form you can see ammonium nitrate, calcium ammonium nitrate or CAN or uh, ammonium sulphate nitrate and in case of amide fertilizer obviously urea and calcium cyanamide. So, example uh, by the way the cyanamide can be also divided in the into subdivided into the cyanamide form. So, both this urea and calcium cyanamide are organic in nature. So, let us start with urea, urea obviously contains 46 percent of nitrogen and this was first produced uh, you know from urine in 1773 and in the lab it was first synthesized in 1928 by Wohler, German scientist Wohler where in the you know basically chemically uh, <coughs> combined this NHT with HCNO to get this uh, uh, urea and this is the first organic compound formed from two inorganic materials and now basically we produce this uh, um, urea by combining this ammonia and carbon dioxide to form this ammonium carbamate and this ammonium carbamate further uh, decomposes to form water and this uh, urea. So, urea also needs some 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 percent formaldehyde mix because it improves the physical strength and resistance to caking. So, urea is very very soluble in water and also very very susceptible to caking that means if you remember if you if you if you if you, if you leave if you leave it it will easily absorb the moisture from the atmosphere and form the cakes. So, we to improve the physical condition and to prevent the caking generally 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 percent of formaldehyde is basically mixed with urea and that is why it is called a conditioner. What are the other conditioner? Other conditioners are china clay, talc etcetera. Now, also urea also contains a chemical called biurate this is a formula of uh, biurate and this biurate is very very uh, you know toxic when it is uh, greater than 2 percent and it basically damages the foliages and biurate sensitive crop is basically citrus. Citrus is very very biurate sensitive. So, uh, the level of biurate has to be monitored very carefully while producing the uh, urea fertilizer. So, synthesis of nitrogenous fertilizer basically occurs through different processes, uh, industrial different different industrial processes obviously. The first process is the cyanamide process where the end product is calcium cyanamide 
and it is not produced in India basically. Secondly, the electric arc process where the end process uh, end product is nitric acid. Finally, the surpex process where end product is ammonia and the most common and popular is Heber Bros process where end product is ammonia and it is popular method for production of direct ammonia from the atmospheric air and the power requirement is also less compared to cyanamide and arc process. So, this is a very very popular process. So, so this basically schematic diagram of the Heber process. So, Heber Bosch process. So, you can see here uh, is in you know first of all there is a production of the synthesized mixture. So, we basically the uh, mixture of methane and water is inside water vapor is inserted where this methane reacts with water vapor to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen and also in the subsequently you know oxygen and nitrogen in the in uh, uh, is inserted in air uh, through air and you can see this carbon monoxide and this hydrogen and this nitrogen goes through here and ultimately through the catalyzer at 500 degree centigrade ultimately it produces the nitrogen hydrogen and carbon dioxide and uh, this hydro you know uh, nit this water and carbon dioxide get released from here ultimately producing the nitrogen and hydrogen and these nitrogen and hydrogen goes towards the heater and ultimately goes towards the reactor which where uh, it forms the the liquid ammonia and this uh, you know unused NH2 uh, uh, you know nitrogen and hydro you know hydrogen basically goes back to the reactor. So, there is a you can see ultimately it is a production of ammonium uh, fluid and this ammonia fluid is basically the raw material for different uh, nitrogen fertilizer production industries. We will see how they are helping in different nitrogen fertilizer production. So, this is a very good slide which shows the how uh, you can produce different nitrogen as fertilizer from ammonia. So, obviously, the starting point is ammonia which we produce due to heber -Bros process and you can see you through the dehydration process you can produce anhydrous ammonia which is 82.2 percent of nitrogen. Then reaction with HCl or hydrochloric acid produce the ammonium chloride which is 25 percent of nitrogen. Uh, reacting with H2SO4 it produces the ammonium sulphate which is a very important um, nitrogen as fertilizer 20.6 percent of nitrogen. Then reacting with HNO3 it produces the ammonium nitrate which contains 34 percent of nitrogen. Now, this ammonium nitrate is highly explosive. So, to prevent the application and the uh, and the market of ammonium nitrate you know now they have produced another uh, you know we, we generally produce another fertilizer called CAN and CAN is basically the mixture of uh, calcium carbonate and ammonium nitrate. So, in the in the ratio of ammonium nitrate and calcium carbonate in the ratio of 6 is to 4. So, ultimately calcium ammonium nitrate is formed which contains 25 percent of nitrogen and when it is mixed with the carbon dioxide ultimately it produces urea which is 46 percent nitrogen and ammonia when mixed with the h 2 p 4 in 1 is to 1 ratio uh, it produces the monoammonium phosphate which has the grade of 11 is to 52 and then 2 is to 1 ratio it will produce DAP or diammonium phosphate and you can see here these are the um, 184610 and 11520 that means this fertilizer 100 kg of this fertilizer will contain 11 uh, kg of nitrogen. 52 kg of P 2 5 and 0 kg of K 2 O. Similarly, here it will be 18 kg of uh, nitrogen and then 46 kg of P 2 5 and 0 kg uh, K 2 O. So, uh, again when ammonia is mixed with a single superphosphate it will produce the ammonium superphosphate and ultimately when it is reacts with a urea to produce urea ammonium phosphate or UOP or gromor which has a grade of 20 is to 20 is to 0 and 28 is to 28 is to 0. And uh, also there is a process called ODA process and through ODA process we generally produce the nitrophosphate or shufala. Shufala is very important for first, uh, phosphatic uh, you know uh, uh, important fertilizer which has a grade of 15 is to 15 is to 15 and then, and then when mixed with the uh, you know H2SO4 and H3PO4 it produces ammonium phosphate sulphate 
and uh, you know with these two grades that is 16 is to 20 and 20 to 28 and mixing with H2SO4 and HNO3 it is produce ammonium sulphate nitrate and also through Ostwald process it produces the nitric acid. So, you can see whole bunch of you know, different fertilizer can be produced from this ammonia which is produced to this uh, Heber and Brosch uh, synthesis. So, let us go ahead and see what is the phosphatic fertilizer, what are the phosphatic fertilizer. The original source of phosphatic fertilizer in the early manufacture of phosphatic fertilizer were bones, uh, different animal bones which contain high amount of phosphate. However, due to the exhaustion of those bones, uh, you know worldwide demand of phosphate and also the, due to the high worldwide demand of phosphatic fertilizer, it is not, uh, it is right now it is produced from the rock phosphate. And this rock phosphate occurs in nature as mineral phosphate in very deposits, mainly you know maybe igneous, maybe sedimentary or metamorphic, which contain apatite, which is the phosphate bearing mineral, along with the other um, accessory minerals such as quartz, silicates, carbonates, sulphates, SQ oxide, etc. And commercial grade rock phosphate basically contain 32 percent of P2O5. So, if we classify the phosphatic fertilizer, you will see three different types. First of all, water soluble phosphatic fertilizer. Examples are monocalcium phos phosphate, and uh, you know water soluble is monocalcium phosphate. Example is single superphosphate or SSP, which contains 16 percent P25 or 6.88 percent of P. Then double superphosphate, which contains 32 percent of P25. Then triple superphosphate, which also contains 46 percent of P25. And DSP also called uh, enriched superphosphate, which is basically mixture of single superphosphate and triple superphosphate. Secondly, citric acid soluble phosphate, which is basically dicalcium phosphate K CaHPO4 and uh, which contain 34 percent of P2O5. And insoluble, which is both water and uh, citric acid soluble. So, tricalcium tri phosphate or or example, you know, tricalcium phosphate is an example. Uh, you, know, you know, rock phosphate is basically example of tricalcium phosphate, which contains 20 to 40 percent of P2O5, and only soluble, only you know, soluble in strongly acid soils or organic peat soils. So, let us see how rock phosphate creates different types of phosphatic fertilizer. So, you can directly use this rock phosphate because it is a uh, acid soluble fertilizer or insoluble fertilizer you can directly apply to the highly acidic uh, soil. Uh, when it mixed with H2SO4 it will produce the single superphosphate, when it is mixed with H3PO4 it will produce the uh, triple superphosphate and uh, due to the thermal or elemental process and due to acid, uh, acid treatment it will also, also produce the phosphoric acid and this phosphoric acid basically you can directly apply the phosphoric acid. Also you can mix the phosphoric acid, react the phosphoric acid to produce the monoammonium phosphate. When it is reacting with two molecules of ammonia to it produce the diammonium phosphate or DAP and also ammonia mix you know when phosphoric acid is mixed with the ammonia and then H2SO4 and ultimately it produces both DAP and ammonium uh, sulphate phosphate ASP. And uh, you can see here uh, no the phosphoric acid I am sorry when phosphoric acid will be mixed with ammonia and H2SO4 it will produce ammonium sulphate phosphate and uh, from phosphoric acid we will get super phosphoric acid when it the super phosphoric acid further uh, reacts with ammonia it produces ammonium polyphosphate. So, you can see uh, how this rock phosphate um, basically reacts with different uh, compounds to form different types of uh, phosphatic fertilizers. So, it is clear now. Now, let us discuss about the single superphosphate. Now, single superphosphate is basically the having the formula of uh, this CaH2PO4 whole 2 and uh, this is the most important phosphatic fertilizers in India in basically in use and it contains 16 percent of P25 in available form and it is a grey ash like powder with good keeping and storage abilities. And finally, phosphatic fertilizer hardly moves in the soil and hence they are placed in the root zone, we will discuss that later on. So, let us start with the potassium fertilizer. 
the potash fertilizer are commercially prepared from potash bearing minerals namely sylvite which is basically potassium chloride 63.1 percent of k2o langbenite which is k2so4 2mgso4 which contains uh, 22.6 percent of k2o and uh, and then kainite which contains uh, kcl and mg uh, magnesium sulfate uh, and it contains 18.9 percent of K2O and carnalite which is basically potassium chloride and magnesium chloride um, which is contain which contains 17 percent of K2O. So, the most important potassium fertilizers are muriate of potash that is MOP and sulphate of potash that is SOP. So, muriate of potash basically contains 60 percent of K2O and uh, it is basically uh, manufactured from sylvanite and a mixture of you know is a mixture of sylvanite and uh, halite and uh, after you know and there is a beneficial beneficial process you know, where you know they remove different types of impurities to form this mop now remember one major thing that mop contains 60% of k2o in case of sulfur uh, you know you know Sulfur of potash, sulphate of potash in SOP, it contains 48 percent of K2 and 18.3 percent of sulfur and basically uh, is manufactured by treating sylvite with sulfuric acid. You can see here sylvite is KCl, when it is mixed with H2SO4, then it forms a K2SO4. Now, MOP is potassium chloride or muriate of potash, it is a uh, white or red or crystal. Uh, contain 60 percent uh, K2O. Secondly, it is completely soluble in water and thereby readily available to the crops. Thirdly, it is not lost from the soils as it, it is uh, absorbed on the colloid surfaces. Finally, it can be you know it can be applied at sowing or before and after the sowing. The chloride content uh, is about 46 percent and the chloride content is objectionable to some crops like tobacco, potato, etc., where quality is the consideration. So, in for these crops only, uh, you know, this application of uh, sulphate of potash is recommended. So, we have covered the primary nutrients. Let's, let us see some secondary nutrients. So, sec some secondary nutrients examples are magnesium sulphate, you can see MgSO4, calcium sulphate, CS, uh, you know, calcium chloride that is CaCl2. Uh, 6 is 2 and also different types of uh, sulphate fertilizers basically we apply for uh, correcting the sulphur deficiency especially for oil seeds crops like mustard. Now, sulphate sulphur is a very much required uh, for oil seeds crop like mustards. Okay. So, there are also different micronutrient fertilizers also you know there are 6 to 7 you know there are different micronutrients and these micronutrients are uh, also applied sometime through foliar spray sometime through fertigation fertigation is joint application of fertilizer and irrigation water so we can apply these small you know micronutrient fertilizer they require in a smaller quantity as compared to the macronutrient fertilizers so most of the time we apply through spray onto the crop and the crop basically ingests those uh, you know micronutrients directly through their leaves. So, you can see some example first of all ferrous sulphate heptahydrate it is a water soluble fertilizer containing 20 percent of iron and uh, also iron chelates are important EDTA, EDDPA DPA, these are chelating agents which can basically chelate the iron, um, iron and also they are suitable for application as foliar nutrients. So, these chelates basically we apply through foliar application. Second is zinc sulphate heptahydrate and uh, it is basically water soluble whitish salt containing 23 percent of zinc and it is applied as foliar nutrient and it is acidic you know action it is acidic action causes corrosion damage to plants. Then zinc, zinc oxide which contains 70 percent of zinc and it is slightly soluble in water. Then sodium uh, molybdate which supplies the molybdenum and molybdenum content is 40 percent and ammonium molybdate all, all also it contains 54 percent of molybdenum and then uh, mang uh, manganese sulphate manganese sulphate it is well known water soluble manganese fertilizers and 
uh, you know it is pink salt containing 24 percent of manganese and it dissolves in water and it is suitable for foliar application and also manganese silates uh, MNDTA which contain 30 per 13 percent of uh, which contain 13 percent of manganese and it plays an important role in crop fertilization and borax obviously 11 percent of boron it is water water it is water soluble uh, white salt obviously and uh, it can be applied to as you know as a soil dressing or foliar application you can directly spray into the crop. Boric acid also which contain 18 percent of boron and it is a white crystalline powder and it is uh, applied through uh, foliar nutrient. So, these are some important micronutrient fertilizers. Similarly, for copper also we have copper sulphate uh, which is an important micronutrient fertilizer. Liquid nitrogenous fertilizer, liquid nitrogen fertilizer are the principal forms of mixed fertilizers and the main advantage are these are very low cost and, and uni, you know uh, advantages are the low cost per unit nitrogen and easy to handle and apply uh, you know if suitable equipment is available. However, these are corrosive and require special applicator and storage container and uh, the important nitrogenous solution is is a mixture of urea, ammonium, nitrate and water often referred to as UAN which is a you know, solution containing 35 percent of nitrogen and liquid liquid nitrogenous fertilizer can be also applied either as a foliar spray uh, through irrigation and it is called the you know also through irrigation which is called the fertigation process. So, what is the fertilizer grade? Fertilizer grade refers to the guaranteed minimum percentage of nitrogen phosphorus and potash containing in the fertilizer material. So, the number of number representing the grade are separated by hyphens and always stated that the sequence of uh, N and P. So, for example, label on the fertilizer bag with a grade of 20 is to 28 is to 0 indicate the 100 kg of fertilizer material contains 28 kg of nitrogen and 28 kg of, uh, of, of P and no potash. So, different grades of fertilizers are also available in India. Some of them are 28, 28, 0, 20, 20, 0, 14, 35, 14, 17, 17, 17 and 14, 28, 14. By the way, the uh, these uh, forms of P is basically 28 kg of P 205. So, fertilizer some other let us let us discuss some other important terms also. So, fertilizer ratio is the ref, refers to the ratio of the percentage of the N P 2 5 and K 2 in the fertilizer mixture. So, basically the fertilizer grade of 12 is to 6 is to 6 as a fertilizer ratio of 2, 2 is to 1 is to 1. Then conditioner, conditioner are low grade organic materials like pit soil, paddy husk, groundnut etcetera which are added to the fertilizer mixture during their preparation to reduce the hygroscopicity and to improve their physical condition. You can see this is a pit soil and this is a sawdust and filler. What is a filler? Filler is a wet make mineral, mineral uh, material like sand, like soil, coal powder etcetera and added to the fertilizer ingredients so as to produce a mixture of the desired grades. So, the last uh, slide of fertilizer is the method of fertilizer application. Now, there are several methods of fertilizer application the broad you know broad classification the major major processes are broadcasting placement band placement and pellet application. Now, broadcasting are again divided into two parts one is called the basal application and that is trough dressing. Now, basal application is when you mix the fertilizer uh, during the preparation of the land through the soil and uh, this is called basal application. And Top dressing is when we when we when you give the fertilizer when you spread the fertilizer in a standing crop for, for especially in case of nitrogenous fertilizer like in case of close standing crops like uh, you know rice wheat etc. Then it is called top dressing. Now top dressing has some problem because uh, you know there are some weed growth you know it encourages the weed growth also sometime it cannot reaches the plant root for their uptake also. So, there are some uh, drawback of top dressing also. So, these are two major type basal and top dressing again basal applied uh, during the land preparation time and top dressing is when there is a crop stranding. 
So, placement, placement, uh, you know, uh, there are also of three types one is plausible placement, then deep placement, and localized placement. So, placement, uh, you know, plausible placement is during the plowing time when there is a, a fertilizer placed uh, just at the plowed layer, then it is called the plow placement. Deep placement generally occur in case of ammoniacal fertilizer, they are placed in the deep anaerobic zones to reduce the volatilization loss and localized placement also uh, generally we uh, you know localized placement is also given for certain uh, certain fertilizer around a plant or seed and band placement is also very much important uh, band placement is of two types one is hill placement which is given for uh, different orchids and uh, you know row placement is basically for some standing crop like sugarcane where we uh, you know apply the we apply the fertilizer in the rows and also some pellet application, now pellet applications are basically done in case of urea, urea pellets are produced and uh, so these are some application of solid fertilizers. So, I hope that uh, you have learned some uh, new concepts of fertilizers and their classification, how do we apply this fertilizer, what are the different types of important macronutrient, micronutrient and secondary nutrient fertilizers, what are the nutrient contents. So, guys we have finished this uh, week seven of lectures so we'll we know in the next lecture we'll start our week eight of lectures so thank you and uh, let us meet next in the next lecture